What up YouTube? How are we feeling today? Hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing fantastic. Back with another Division 2 video and back with another TU16 build. And today we're going over Strikers. Because Striker is so much fun to play around with. Especially with this combination. I'm using the Carbine 7. Just a straight laser beam. And you can keep up with your stacks. No, we're not using the ACS-12. Yes, I have it on my back. But I'm not using it. I'm not storming in front of it. Shooting my ACS-12. Making sure that all my stacks are up. And then using my normal gun. You of course can do that. You can of course run in. But then in my opinion you should go for a little bit more blue cores. To be a little bit more protected. This build is just straight up beaming from a distance. And still keep your striker stacks up you of course need to build up to those striker stacks and that's why we chose for this combination and why i say we is because we are talking about it live on stream we are talking about the builds we're talking about what the best combination could be and what the fun combination could be so every time on twitch slash i am pure prime if we're testing out the build i'm talking to the community Talking about how we can set up this build, how it works and how it doesn't work. So, I have a few gameplay clips in the background as you can see. But let's dive right into the build and show you why this striker build is so freaking powerful and a lot of fun to play with. And as usual, we're starting with my specialization. We're using the technician specialization. And why? Because we want that linked laser pointer on there. Because I'm using flatline on my carbine 7. So jumping over to my build. This is the full build. Jumping over to the carbine. I have it on 112.8k damage with zero proficiency. So everything that you see here can only go higher if you go on a proficient level of your carbine 7. Or whatever gun you like to use. I have it on max out assault rifle damage, health damage, damage you target out of cover. And then, just like I said, I chose for flatline. Amplifies the weapon damage by 15% to pulsed enemies. And after 3 kills applies a pulsed to the next enemy you hit. That doesn't really matter because we're using the linked laser pointer. Every time that if you aim at somebody, they will get pulsed and you will activate flatline getting that amplified damage in. The beautiful thing about the amplified damage is it amplifies your total damage. So if we are on the max stacks of that striker, you will amplify that damage hitting up to almost 1.1 million even running around in the open world as you saw on the gameplay clips and i will show you a few more gameplay clips if you are in the open world or if you are attacking a control point for example then you can still hit up to that max stacks of the striker and still hit that 1.1 million damage on a crit and then probably on a headshot my secondary is the rock and roll Again, I'm not really using the rock and roll, but I'm using it because of my proficiency rank. It's not up to proficiency rank. So I'm using the rock and roll for that proficiency rank. You can choose whatever gun you want, but you can of course always use the rock and roll, dive into the fight, open up your rock and roll, shoot everybody, gain those max stacks of that striker, and then take everybody out keeping that striker stacks at the max you can do that as well but i chose to just go for beaming across the universe my gun is the busy little bee or my pistol is the busy little bee again this is exactly the same the busy little bee is very nice as well you can use it you can just shoot a few people and every time that you shoot an npc and you switch over to your gun you gain at least 20 percent extra weapon damage so i know we are building up stacks so it probably is not the best with the striker combination but if you use the busy little bee even if you just shoot one guy then you'll gain 20 percent weapon damage as the talent reads 
busy little bee. Each shot to a different target will give you one stack, up to 10 stacks, and each stack will give you 20% weapon damage increase. Stacks will activate once the agent switches weapon and will last for 10 seconds. So if you just shoot one enemy and then switch over to your carbine, you will get an extra 20% weapon damage output for 10 seconds. This helps out a lot and can be very, very useful. But on this build, I just use it to get up to my proficiency rank. As you can see, I'm only at level 4. Then jump on over to the build. And this is the setup, guys. And yes, I am not using the chest. You can use the chest, but then go for the rock and roll. Then storm in, use your rock and roll, open up your rock and roll, and then... Probably always use your rock and roll because it's very, very hard to keep all the stacks up. I know a lot of other content creators are running around with that chest. We tested it out and we talked about it in chat yesterday and we don't think that the chest is worth it because it's very, very hard to still keep those stacks above that 100 to 200. Yes, it is possible, but you need to work for it. You need to be in the faces of the enemies. And then again, you need to stack into blue cores. If you're going to stack into blue cores, you're going to lose your damage output. So yes, you can go for the chest. And yes, you can work your freaking butt off to keep those stacks active. But then you at least need two or maybe even three armor cores. And then your weapon damage goes down. And it's almost exactly the same as this build right here. Using the backpack, upping that 0.65% to that 1%. So in my opinion, in our opinion, it's not worth it to go for the chest. Because it's very, very hard to keep at max stacks or keep those stacks up. If you're running around with a full rep build like we are doing. So we chose for the chest of Fenris. Fenris, weapon damage, critical hit chance, critical hit damage, critical hit damage mod on there. Why Fenris giving us an extra assault rifle damage? Because we are around that 50 to 55% critical hit chance. If you are above that 55% critical hit chance to that 60 cap, then go for Grupo. Grupo will give you more damage output if you are above that threshold of 55% critical hit chance. So for example, if you're playing in a group and somebody is running around with a coyote mask and you have a Grupo piece, you have a Grupo chest, then switch to that Grupo chest because that will give you more damage output. But because this build is around that 50 to 55% critical hit chance, you, you are better off using Fenris. I use Obliterate on there. Critical hits increase the total weapon damage by 1% for 5 seconds. Stacks up 25 times. So again, if you are on the max stacks of your Striker, you are probably at the max stacks of your Obliterate as well. So this is a whole build-up build. But again, like I said in the intro, like I said at the beginning, you can hit up to 1.1 million crits on the hat. And it is a lot of fun, especially in combination with that carbine. You can just shred through everything. Then next to that, the only piece that is not strikers are my knee pads, foxes sprayers. Why the foxes sprayers? Because this gives us some damage to target out of cover. That multiplicative damage, again, just like our flatline. So we're gaining a lot of multiplicative damage and this does a lot. And in my opinion, this is one of the best ways to run the striker build with an AR and you do not want to be in a face of somebody else. Yes, you can run around with running and gunning with an SMG for example, but then again you need to stack into blue cores. You're probably gonna hit exactly the same or maybe even lower in the crit shots. So jumping over to striker. Everything I have on this build is weapon damage and critical hit damage. I'm going to show you it in a second, but let's explain Striker. Striker Battle Gear, two pieces will give you 15% weapon damage. Three pieces will give you a 15% fire rate. And that's why my Carbine 7 is on 909 RPM. You can go for the FAMAS as well. Getting above that 1000 RPM 
it is a lot of fun to play with the FAMAS. It's still one of the best, all not the best ARs in the game. But I just like my carbine. It's just a straight shooter. You can just beam. And I got forced by chat yesterday to use it. And I quite like it. But let's get back to striker. We are all doing it for the four pieces. The striker's gamble. Weapon hits increase the total weapon damage by 0.65%. Stacking up to that 100 times. Giving us 65% weapon damage. But... Because we're using the backpack, that increases our 0.65% to 1%. So we're gaining 1% 100 times, so we're gaining an extra 100% weapon damage. One stack is lost per second between 0 and 50 stacks, and two stacks per second are lost between 50 and a 100 stacks. As I explained, weapon damage, critical hit damage as a mod, and one critical hit chance attribute on there... Then for the holster, weapon damage, critical hit chance on there. Because again, I always like to build towards at least that 50% critical hit chance before going into critical hit damage. My gloves are 15% weapon damage, 6% critical hit chance. And my backpack is 15% weapon damage and 6% critical hit chance with a 12% critical hit damage mod on there. And as I explained, the backpack has a talent risk management, increased total weapon damage gain per stack of the striker's gamble from 0.65 to 1%. So this is the whole overview of the build guys and you definitely, definitely need to try it out. It is a lot of fun to play with and you can just shred through a lot of content in the game. If you're playing solo, it can still be a little bit hard to keep those stacks of 100. You still need to aggro everybody, especially if you're running through missions, every time you shoot like 10 to 15 enemies, and then the area is cleared, you need to go to the next area and need to build up those stacks again. But if you are playing with just one extra friend, it is so freaking easy to keep up the striker battle stacks. And just like you saw in the gameplay, if I'm playing solo on some control points, it's still pretty easy to keep up the stacks because you, you're getting spawns after spawns after spawns after spawns. Then I went for the pulse. Why I went for the pulse? Because I like to know where everybody is. I like to pulse around. Yes, we're using the linked laser pointer, so I don't really need the pulse. You can go for whatever skill you want, but I like to know where all the enemies are, especially if you're running around with a gear set that needs to be procced, that needs to keep active, that you need to keep those stacks active. Next to that, because we're running a full red build, I went for my Reviver Hive. If I go down, I get an extra life and I don't have to start that whole mission over again. Or wait on the, the guys and the girls that are backing me on a CP to pick me up. For the Hive, I went for 10% Reviver Hive Repair, 5% Rage and 4.9% Duration. And for my Pulse, I went for 10% Radius and 10% Effect Duration. So this is the full overview of the build. Let's jump over to the stats. I have 50% critical hit chance and 105% critical hit damage with 75% headshot damage. But that's pretty much it because we do not use any of the blue cores. We don't have arm regeneration on where we don't have hazard protection or anything. So these are the only stats that are useful for this build. But again, guys, that's pretty much it for this build, and I'm having a lot of fun with Strikers. You're shooting way faster, as you saw. I have 909 RPM on my laser, my laser of a carbine. And then, of course, building up those stacks, seeing that extra critical hits going up and up and up. It's so freaking satisfying. And a lot of fun. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about this setup of the build. Are you using the backpack and the chest? Are you only using the chest? And then for example the memento backpack. To give you also 30% weapon damage. But a little bit more survivability. Because you're getting that extra armor core. And that extra 3% arm regeneration. 
I could go for that memento as well, but I wanted to do something different with the striker. There are a lot of memento builds out there, and I just wanted to do for something else. So let me know in the comments down below, how would you build this? What would you change? And can you keep up with the stacks? Because that's the biggest question. In our opinion, it's not worth it to go for the chest. But again, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to smash that like button. Hit that subscribers button. And of course the notification bell. Pure Prime out. <laughs>